Hi, I'm Daniel and this is Asheville. Today we're fitting out a basement with a luxury state-of-the-art home cinema. The client went for the 158 inch. 7.2. The stairs has been designed bespoke. For once a new space. Sound. Sound. replicate a movie theater. Doubles up as acoustic treatment for the room. The basement where we're installing this luxury home cinema was previously flooded and about to collapse. There's a separate video documenting how we resolved this. It took us eight months to repair and rebuild the basement to ensure it was watertight. We then waited for a further six months to ensure there were no leaks. Then we sat down with the client and began to discuss the home cinema. The basement has now been dry for 10 months. And now we're ready to start the fit out work. Over the past two months, we've gone back and forth with various design options, and I'm happy to say we finally have a plan in place. Now with the client's initial vision for the space, their budget and color palette, we used our experience and expertise to reverse engineer and hopefully create a cinema which aligns with the client's lifestyle and expectations. A home cinema, also known as a home theater, is a room within your home where you try to recreate a movie theater experience. Now, depending on your budget, you'll need audio, video, control, lighting equipment, comfortable seating, and soft furnishings. If you're a movie buff, it's a great way to enjoy movies and watch them in the way they were made to be watched. They're also convenient, comfortable. It's an area in the home where the family can come together and it can increase the value of your home. Now, the cost of home cinemas can vary massively depending on your budget and the size of the room. Now, a simple setup can cost anywhere in the region of 20K and go all the way up to 500K, depending if you're trying to recreate the emotions and reactions that you would get while sat in the IMAX. When designing a home cinema, the first thing you need to look at is the size and shape of the room. This will dictate the maximum screen size you can have and the orientation of the seating. Once you've done that, you need to decide between a TV, projector screen, and a video wall. Now on this project, a video wall was out of the budget. So we had to decide between a TV and a projector screen. In some projects we have both, but those are in projects where we have natural light coming into the room, which can impair your vision. So we've decided to go for just a projector down here because there's no natural light. We have lighting control and we're trying to replicate a movie theater. So this is the wall we're working with. We gave the client two options, 135 inch and 158 inch. Luckily for us, the client went for the 158 inch, which will make this room look a lot better. However, that caused one problem. It meant there wasn't enough room on this wall for a center speaker. So we've had to specify a projector screen, which is acoustically transparent. When we put the speaker on the wall behind it, the sound can travel through it without being impaired. As we have a projector screen, we've gone for a 4K projector. Now the location of the projector was decided on aesthetics and manufacturer's guidelines. Sound. Sound. Sound! Now this is important in any home cinema setup. We've gone for a 7.2.2 audio system. This setup consists of three in-wall speakers, which is a center, left and right, four in-ceiling speakers, two of which are Atmos channels, two subwoofers, left and right, and finally, two in-wall speakers, right and left. To tell you a little bit more about the Atmos channels, they attempt to interpret sounds as 3D objects. So if somebody was running through the forest, you can hear birds flying and the directional wind in the trees. Now those speakers are gonna be powered by a Yamaha AVR, which is an audio video receiver. And all the AV equipment is gonna sit in a media rack in this media cupboard here. That has been chosen, one, for aesthetic purposes, two, for practicality. And all this equipment is gonna bring a lot of remotes. So we've gone for a very small control for home automation setup. 
With the AV out of the way, we moved on to the pretty stuff. Now the client was adamant he wanted to go for a midnight blue color palette. So we showed him multiple samples and he chose from these. We then had a look at it again and it felt rather overbearing having all the midnight blue around you. We then decided to go for this 150 mil stainless steel trim. Now this is something that you might often find on luxury cars interiors. We then encountered an issue. The staircase coming into this area is rather small, so we couldn't have wall paneling on the wall next to the stairs. So we decided to take the same fabric that we're using for the wall paneling, and we are gonna paper back it and put it on the wall as if it were a wallpaper. The stairs has been designed bespoke. It's a steel spine with oak treads. The carpet is a thick luxury woven in a midnight blue finish. Now this is perfect in a home cinema because it dampens the harsh reflections from speakers and suppresses reverb, which is basically echo. Lighting wise, we have multiple features to create ambiance. Originally, we had this stainless steel panel at the top, bottom, and running down the walls. The client decided against this in later design meetings. We are now only using these panels down the walls. We're gonna have an LED profile behind, which is gonna light the panel in on both the left and the right. This entire rear wall is covered by a slatted oak, randomly staggered, diffused LED feature wall. Believe it or not, this doubles up as acoustic treatment for the room because it's made with sound absorption foam. Finally, onto the seating, which again is gonna be a midnight blue finish. Now, this is gonna be a family area for movies and sporting events. So the first row of seating is gonna have a very low back to encourage people to lie down. The second row of seating is gonna be raised by about 300 mil and is gonna be two armchairs where people can sit and see the screen clearly. Enough said, let's get started with the staircase. Now these steps are gonna be clad with oak. You can also see our electrics are in place. These are for all the LED lights which are gonna be in each and every step. We're gonna leave the stairs like this for now because if we put the oak treads on, they could get damaged when we're coming in and out of here with materials. What you can see on the floor is the area marked out for the second row of seating. We have done some test colors on the ceiling here. The one at the end has been chosen, which is the darkest of all the colors. What will work best with the fabric? This blue will also be used on the bespoke cabinet, which is going in the recess over here. Due to the current challenges with materials, we can only get 50 square meters of the chosen wall fabric. Now that means that we cannot have all the areas that we wanted to do. So we've decided to use the same LED feature on this wall, on this wall after the staircase is complete, and it will go round on this wall onto the facing wall where we are gonna have the media cupboard. With the 50 square meters, we'll still have enough that we can paper back and then have on this wall. The entire ceiling is now painted in blue and it's a completely different feel down here. Uh, the room feels a lot smaller, but by the time we put the fabrics in here, it should feel very comfortable. The cutouts for the speakers are in the wall. Uh, we have a right, a sub, a center, a sub, and a left. 
We have another cutout for a speaker here and we have a cutout for a keypad. Here you can see the feature we built for the vertical stainless steel and we have created this MDF feature. So this MDF moves up and down. We have that all the way down. And then this is the stainless steel feature. We put this on top of it. Once we stick that on, it means in future when we go to remove this, we simply lift this and we can take this off, which is perfect if we have any trouble or we need to do any maintenance. In areas where we have the fabric on the walls, uh, we are gonna have skirting. And in areas where we have this feature, which we are gonna put in more places than we thought of doing before, we're gonna go all the way down to the carpet. We've tried to match the two of them, so we have continuity in the space. So here we've used 12 mil veneered MDF in walnut, which we have stained, to try and get it as close as possible to this finish. And to get it even more like it, on the side of this 12 mil MDF, we're gonna stain it in black. So when you look down at this, it should be more or less the same finish as this. Making the door at the moment. So here we can see the cutout for the hinges. Now the door is gonna open into the room and won't have a handle, but you will have a handle on the inside. But what's gonna be a bit tricky is on this wall, we're going to have this finish, and this is also gonna be on the door. So we need to ensure that the cutout for the door surround is going through the material here and not on the timber so it matches up perfectly and is seamless. This is the centralized lighting panel. To save time, we began the build of this with the units within off-site. All the lighting in this room has been wired back to this central point. Now we've fixed it onto the wall, we've pulled all the lighting through and we're going to connect those now also. The installation of the veneered MDF skirting boards have started. The steps are being clad, once complete we're going to protect them with board and gaffer tape. The guys have arrived to take measurements for the glass balustrade. They're using a corrugated sheet that is translucent in order to see where to mark the holes and see where the steps start and finish. in and you will notice that the carpet is a completely different color than the one the client chose earlier. That is because with the challenges we're having um, with materials at the moment, the other carpet wasn't available for another 16 weeks. Uh, so the client had a look at another bunch of samples and this was actually option three. You can see how the skirting looks up against the carpet. Now you can see here and here, the joins in the skirt, which do not look very nice. However, we have purposely put those here, so when we put the panels here, the panels actually cover all the joints. The stairs are almost done. We have covered to protect them. Now we have one piece of glass going here, which is gonna be the balustrade, but we haven't put that piece of glass in yet because when the furniture comes down, they need as much room as possible to maneuver. We're gonna fit the plastic perspex in front of this viewing window to look through to the swimming pool on the other side. We're gonna fit that first, uh, then we're going to finish with the fabric back paper up to it. If we do that, we can cover the not too nice frame which was around the original glass. Let's have a look at our slim subwoofer, which fits perfectly 
in this gap here. Look at that. So once the speakers are fitted, we're gonna fit the screen in front of this and then we're gonna finish the fabric up to the screen. It's very important that we cover and protect the carpet. So we do this by dropping down a damp proof membrane and putting board on top of it. Once the floor has been covered and protected, we proceed with the wall paneling. First, we start with the slatted oak panels and then move on to the custom fabric panels. The fabric wall panels are in. Now this is the sample we had of the fabric wall panel before it went in, but now it's gone in, unfortunately it is 10 mil thicker. So we need to find a way to build out our profile slightly. Now we're testing two ways here. Over there, we have the ply put directly on the back of the aluminium profile. And over here, we have it at the back. Now looking at the two options, we have decided that this one is a lot better. We are all in agreement because we feel that it gives a lot more light onto the fabric. The technique with sticking these panels on the wall is to use a glue, but to hold it in place, we put a couple of nails in it. Once we're done with the nails and everything is dry, we just pull the nails out. However, we have to use a slightly different technique on the door. So we use a small bit of timber to hold it in place and we nail that timber in at the top and bottom. This is how we get the LEDs into the wall. We have this 10 mil profile. We drill a hole at the top of this so we can fish a cable through. Now, thankfully, the ventilation units are on the back of this wall and we have a void where we can fish the cables round. We then have a continuous LED that fits within this profile and then we have a diffuser, what fits on the front of that, and then we slot it into the wall. project to this point, we had planned to use this fabric and paper back for the wall by the stairs. Unfortunately, that's not going to be possible because when we're testing in the factory, the wallpaper is so tough, we can't cut it with a Stanley knife, so we won't be able to do any of the intricate work. So the client is choosing an alternative wallpaper. It's time to fit the glass balustrade. Right away after the glass balustrade, we are going to fit the new chosen wallpaper on this wall and the plastic perspex on the viewing area from the swimming pool. Time to assemble the bespoke cabinet that's going in the recess. The day is upon us. What used to be the basement salvage project is now the basement home cinema.
This pool table has been sat in the house for many years. As soon as the basement was completed, the client asked us to bring it down, and you can see by his choice of color that he always wanted a midnight blue home cinema. I am loving this hidden door. I love projects like this, where we take a once unused space and make entertaining and living areas. It's a unique and original design with subtle little touches everywhere and fantastic ambiance lighting. The front area of seating is designed to lay down and watch a film. I've been told by the owner that some of the family have actually started sleeping down here already. Let's watch a film. The elevated seating means that you can be on the edge of your seat for that cliffhanger moment in the film, but yet still be in complete luxury. I'd like to thank the client for letting us film this project from start to finish. Guys, unfortunately, they don't want to be on camera and they didn't want any of the costs revealed. But what I can tell you is that the client and the entire family love this space and they're using it every single day. We have gone from a basement that was about to collapse and was flooded to an automated luxury home cinema. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here to subscribe to our channel. Click here to see a detailed video on when we salvage this basement and click here to see a six million pound property showcase of a London home.